Hello, my name is George Wong. I am a junior in the Marquette University Applied Investment Management Program, and I will be pitching Interdigital Inc, ticker IDCC. Interdigital is a world leader in technology research and development with approximately 28,000 patents and patent applications. The company has a track record of bringing innovative improvements to the world and focuses on wireless and visual communication technologies. The current president of the company is William Merritt. It is headquartered in Wilmington, Delaware, and it is in the communication services sector. The stock is being pitched at a current price of $64.60, and that it has a market cap of nearly $2 billion. It is recommended that Interdigital be added to the AIM small cap fund with a price target of $81.23 representing an upside of 25.75%. Interdigital pays a dividend currently yielding 2.2%. As a world leader in wireless and visual technologies, Interdigital licenses innovative patents to electronics customers across the world. Their customer base includes some of the biggest technology and electronic companies in the world like Apple, Yahweh, and Sony. Given that the Internet of Things, 5G, 6G, and consumer electronics markets are in the early stages of what is expected to be significant growth, Interdigital is in an excellent position to capitalize on the commercialization of these technologies, which will help total revenues grow to $530 million by 2025. Additionally, the company has consistently paid a dividend for the past 10 years and has grown it at a compounded annual growth rate of 13%. The first investment driver is the Internet of Things, 5G, 6G, and consumer electronics. Due to its large, continuously growing patent portfolio, Interdigital is well positioned for growth because of the commercialization of the things I just mentioned. Many research providers are predicting strong growth in the near future for all of these technologies. For reference, Ericsson predicts 5G subscriptions to jump from 13 million at the end of fiscal year 20 to 2.6 billion by the end of fiscal year 25. Regarding consumer electronics, Interdigital acquired Technicolor's licensing business and research and innovation department in fiscal year 18 and 19, respectively. This launched Interdigital in, in the visual communication space, where management expects new revenue contributions near 150 million by fiscal year 25. At the end of fiscal year 20, the company has only recognized 10% of management's expected revenue for this segment. The next investment driver is customer growth and stability. In fiscal year 20, Interdigital completed six new non-exclusive worldwide and royalty-bearing licensing agreements. These new agreements cover wireless handsets, set-top boxes, and video technologies. Management expects many more license agreements to be completed in the near future. These new revenue sources will lower Interdigital's customer concentration and lead to geographic diversity among customers. In addition to customer growth, Interdigital has a history of customer retention. Some of its largest customers, Panasonic, Samsung, and Sharp, have been Interdigital licensees for more than 20 years and have gone through multiple licensing agreements with the company. The third investment driver is intellectual property enforcement and litigation. Interdigital's ability to benefit from licensed litigation is one of the company's greatest strengths. It has consistently approached companies that use their innovations without licensing agreements. Their most recent litigation win came in fiscal year 20, quarter 2, when it ended a legal dispute with Yahweh. Currently, the company is involved in two legal proceedings, one with Lenovo and the other with Xiaomi. Both of these proceedings moved significantly down the line in 2020, and management expects them to side in favor of Interdigital. Both these cases will benefit the company's growing EPS. As mentioned previously, Interdigital has a weighted price target of $81.23, representing a potential upside of 25.75%. A modified five-year DCF was constructed and weighted 70%. A price target of $81.37 was reached. Two relative valuations were also completed, 
an EV to sales model and a price to earnings one. Both were weighted 15%. The EV to sales relative valuation gave a price target of $84.98 and the PE target was $76.85. Investment risks. Patent litigation. The company may experience high litigation fees and or launch files due to patent infringement and patent licensing terms. Customer concentration. Apple and Samsung accounted for approximately 50% of total revenue in fiscal year 20. Both companies have been an interdigital licensee for 12 plus years and their long-term, multi-year, worldwide contracts are expected to be renewed in the near future. Talent retention. Interdigital must retain and continuously hire a diverse base of employees to keep up with the innovation in the world where it may not be able to reach expected revenue targets. Management at Interdigital has been a key to its success and the team is full of individuals who have many years of experience in the telecommunications industry. William Merritt currently serves as the President and CEO and Richard Bresky serves as the CFO. There are seven other C-suite executives and combined, they have an industry experience of over 120 years. Regarding their board, it consists of Merritt and seven independent directors who have experience in telecommunications and patent licensing. Two of the eight board members are women. In conclusion, Interdigital is a world leader in wireless and visual technologies. It is positioned well to capitalize on the commercialization of innovations happening in the world. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you for watching.